Welcome back to the Hollywood Hacking Analysis series, featuring my favorite TV show Mr. Robot. In the first episode, we went over how a black hat hacker from the show named Elliot, reached a digitally secured prison facility and hacked a drug dealer out of jail before midnight. Today, I'll break down an FBI hacking scene from the show, and explain whether or not such an attack is possible in the real world. So let's get started. Disclaimer. This video is for edutainment purposes only. Hacking someone or something without permission is highly discouraged and can result in serious legal consequences. Okay so somewhere along season 2 of the series, Elliot, with the help of his hacking group called F Society, managed to take down one of the world's largest tech conglomerates called e -Corp, and led to the collapse of the global economy. As a result, the FBI got involved, and initiated an intense investigation to uncover the individuals behind this hack, starting their search from within the e -Corp headquarters. In response to this threat, Elliot needed to come up with a way to hack the cell phone of every FBI agent involved in this investigation, and eavesdrop on their conversations to anticipate their next move. With the help of his colleagues at F-Society, he quickly developed a brilliant plan, and was now ready to put it into action. Step number one, Fento cells. Now in order for you to understand what Elliot's plan was, and how it was executed, you first need to know what a Fento cell is, as the whole plan was dependent on this one device. A Fento cell is basically a small cell phone tower that is designed for individuals who experience poor cell phone signals in their homes or offices. It helps by compelling all the nearby cell phones to connect to it, and rerouting their signals through the internet. These devices are sold by multiple cell phone carriers, and you can find most of them on Amazon for about $120 to $200. But how did Elliot manage to utilize this seemingly innocent and legal device, to hack the cell phone of every FBI agent involved in the investigation? Well, he planned to modify this device according to his needs, by updating its firmware using OpenWRT. OpenWRT is a real-life open-source project, that allows developers to download and edit the firmwares for various routers and other devices, in order to enhance their functionality. Elliot or other members at F-Society must have downloaded a firmware from OpenWRT, and modified it so that it would intercept all the phone calls in the area, and send the data to the attackers before forwarding it to the original carrier. This allowed them to effectively convert a femtocell into a malicious cell phone tower. Now a femtocell typically extends up to about 10 meters in range, meaning that Elliot would need to place this femtocell both inside the E-Corps building and on the same floor as the FBI agents who were investigating the hack. So how will he do this with all the physical security inside the building? Well this is where his childhood friend and an employee at E-Corp named Angela comes into play. Angela, who had an access to the building, sneaks to the floor where the FBI was investigating undetected, and manages to place the femtocell within one of the cubicles, connecting the femtocell to the internet using a yellow ethernet cable that can be seen in the frame. Once the femtocell was in place, all the cell phone calls within the area were routed through this modified device, and F-Society with their back door, could then divert and record all the calls to a remote location. So is this hack logical? Well yes, but keep in mind that executing such an attack in real life would require extensive knowledge, and a hacker might encounter numerous complexities that weren't depicted in the show. Also I think that Elliot preparing the malware, and then modifying the femtocell within a short period of time, wouldn't be possible in real life. However I always vouch for hacking scenes within the show as they have a very good and logical attention to detail. If you have any questions regarding the video, make sure to ask them in the comments section down below and I'll see you in the next one.